Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I am the pastor of Providence Church located in Evansville, Indiana. It is a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. It's great to have you here uh, for a Wednesday, uh, April 21st, 2021. This is edition number three of season four of the Morning Devotional. We are currently working our way through the Westminster Shorter Catechism, a, a document, a catechism, a learning tool, a teaching tool that is both theologically rich and pastorally sound as it seeks to guide uh, the Christian uh, through his pilgrimage in this life. We've considered the first two questions already. We have considered the, the chief end of man or the primary purpose of which man was made, and that is to bring glory to God and to enjoy Him. We have considered the very rule that God granted to man in his kindness as to how we might accomplish that primary purpose. And that is, of course, the Bible, the Word of God, the sufficiency of Scripture to all of life for faith and practice was granted and given to us by God in the, uh, in the books of the Old and New Testament, the 66 canonical books of God's holy Word. This morning we're going to consider... Uh, question number three, which summarizes for us what the Bible teaches. But let's pray first, and then we will look at a number of passages as we examine uh, uh, question three of the Shorter Catechism. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, as we uh, consider now your word, as we consider uh, this important subject, uh, we would pray that you'd give grace to us, that you would help us that your spirit would bless that which is said uh, as we seek to meditate on your word and draw out of it that which is useful for us, that we might indeed glorify you in all that we do. We pray that you'd uh, grant us your spirit. We ask that you might be with your people, wherever they may be, uh, some struggling and hurting, uh, some going through great difficulty. Uh, we would pray that you might comfort them and that even in this brief time, uh, they might uh, draw strength from your word as you seek to minister to them as the God of mercy and the Father of all comfort. And so be gracious to us even now, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we are looking at question number three of the Shorter Catechism. There it reads, the question is, what do the scriptures principally teach? Now this follows, of course, naturally on the heels of question number two about the rule God gave. And of course that rule is, is indeed they, is the scriptures themselves, as I've already said, the 66 canonical books of the Bible. But now uh, the divines at Westminster go to, move to summarize for us what the scriptures princi principally teach. It, it, now this question and answer doesn't say everything the Bible says. If they were to do that, they'd have to just reproduce the entire Bible for us in some fashion. But here they are seeking and really a, a, a two-part answer to give to us the core whole of what the Bible does indeed, does indeed principally teach. And so the answer is the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. So let's take the first part and uh, unpack that just a little bit. The scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God. That is simply to say that the Bible itself unpacks for us God's revelation of who He is. It speaks of Him, His character, uh, of His works, and how He involves Himself in His creation. We read in the very opening verse of the Bible about God, where there in Genesis 1-1 we read, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible does not set forth any defense of God's existence and simply asserts God's existence as creator, as the one who has made all things and has decreed all things and is ordering all things uh, according to his uh, perfect and wise uh, will. There was an event in the life of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and arguably the uh, it, well, I would argue that he is the uh, preeminent uh, figure in the Bible, aside from the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's an event in which Moses is seeking uh, to see God. He wants to see him. And, of course, 
God responds, Jehovah, this is Exodus 34, and tells him that uh, that is impossible, but he would, uh, he would hide Moses in the cleft of the rock. He would put him, uh, put him aside, as it were, and um, pass by him. And so in Exodus 34, in verse, six, uh, verse 6, we read, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed. And this is Jehovah speaking. This is what the Bible teaches concerning God. It's one of the central statements of God's revelation to man. And here's, here's what he says. He says, verse, uh, verse 6, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the children's children uh, to the third and fourth generation. And Moses, of course, is re his response to this revelation of God himself is to bow down and worship him. And so here we have just a statement of, uh, of such, the, uh, of, of how God reveals himself to us. And this central statement in Exodus 34 is repeated uh, multiple times across the corpus of the Bible. So the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God. In John chapter 5, uh, we read again of this very statement of the catechism. There in verse uh, 39, Jesus himself is speaking. He says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. And so when we think of the scriptures telling us the things, uh, the things about God, uh, what man is to believe concerning God, we cannot divorce that from the triune God himself. And Jesus, of course, is uh, the one who exegetes the Father. He came in the flesh, he dwelt among men, and men beheld him. Moses, in Exodus 34, was unable to see the face of God. But now in the Incarnation, we see men dwelling with God, God dwelling with men in the person of Jesus. In the, excuse me. In the person of Jesus Christ. And so, he is the one who reveals God to us. And that's precisely the language of Hebrews chapter 1. In the very opening words there, the writer long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. He revealed himself. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance, the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature. And so when Jesus makes that reference in John chapter 5, he is saying that, if you want to know God, you must know me. And so, again, the scriptures clearly teach that those things that uh, we must believe concerning God, that, that, he, is, uh, that he, is, uh, he exists, He is the alone sovereign, a God of mercy and kindness, a God who has revealed himself uh, to men. The whole purpose of John's gospel, in fact, in John chapter 20, it's one of the few occasions in which we can definitively state the purpose of the writing of, of, of any book of the Bible. There in John 20, verse 30, we read, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you what? That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you have life in his name. And then in Romans chapter 10, we have another reference. Um, and I'm just using the proof text from the... Uh, shorter catechism and, and, and using those as, as launching points on other, for other verses. But in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, we read, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. And so, as the scriptures teach us about God, and it does, it reveals his person, tells us who he is. We are not left to wonder or guess as to the nature and person of God. We know that the Bible simply asserts his existence. And we are then to believe that as given to us by the eternal word. But in the second place in the answer, as the scriptures teach what man is to believe concerning God, that is what he has revealed of himself, it also teaches us what duty God requires of man. Put 
put simply, uh, the things that God as creator requires of his creatures. And that is simply uh, obedience. Uh, but it's not just obedience, it's faith, it's trust, it's, it, it's putting our whole hope and, uh, and, and, and desires and priorities uh, upon God and upon His Word, upon His revelation that He has given to us. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 10, in verses 12 and 13, we read there, uh, Moses is speaking and he says, And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding you today for your good. And there's much there that we could spend a lot of time on unpacking. Um, I'm reading an excellent book right now on the whole issue of the fear of God, something that um, the author of this book argues has been lost in our world and has resulted in calamity and moral failure because we do not have a right fear of, of God. Here Moses is not telling the people to be afraid of him. They are telling him to reverence him, to love him, to hold him in esteem and behold his majesty, to have a healthy fear of the Lord. The book I mentioned is entitled Rejoice and Tremble by Michael Reeves. I'm reading this book and Lord willing be writing a review for it for a website um, in the very near future. But here we have explicitly stated the things that God requires of his creatures. And of course, how much more than therefore does God require of that of redeemed people? He's talking here in Deuteronomy 10, he's talking to the second generation of the people of God. He is talking to those that have been bought with a great price, have been redeemed from slavery and bondage, and the expectation then is that because of the great work of God, as he's revealed himself as the God of mercy and kindness and love and compassion, that we would then have zeal and desire joyfully to obey what God has told us. Again, in Joshua chapter 1, as, as Joshua takes the mantle from Moses and he has this daunting responsibility to lead the people of God across the Jordan and into the promised land, we read there in Joshua 1, God is, uh, Jehovah is com, uh, commissioning jo uh, Joshua and he tells him, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And so the Bible was given to us that we might know God and his revelation, but then also then we would then turn in obedience to God to live as he has directed us. And the way we do that, of course, is by meditating on scripture, by reading the word, and, and, and benefiting from the Word. But we also benefit from it primarily in the preaching of the Word of God. That is the ordinary and primary means of grace in which God communicates what He requires of us as His creatures, as His redeemed people. And so I would encourage you to, to lay hold of the preached Word each week as your, as your pastor labors to study and unpack the Scriptures for you and apply it into the into your heart and life. Remember, this is how God is communicating his, 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 his demands of His creatures, His redeemed people, uh, in their lives and how they are to live. Because the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet, and that is precisely what the psalmist says in Psalm 119, in verse 105. There we read, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The implication, of course, is that Without the Word showing us what God requires, we would be wandering in darkness and we would fashion to ourselves all sorts of things that may not and probably would not please God at all. And then we read the, 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 the classic text that I did mention in our previous devotional yesterday. I think it was yesterday. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, that Scripture is breathed out by God. And it's profitable. It's good. We all enjoy a profit. We like to know that there's more money in the bank than not in the bank. A profit. for What's the profit? It's profitable for teaching. That is the Word of God is to be taught. And as we listen to it, we are learning and reproof and correction and for training in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. And so the Bible tells us that God exists. It tells us who He is. 
and what things we must believe about who he is. We cannot fashion a God of our own imagination. We must uh, behold the God that has been revealed in the Word of God. No other God will do. Only the God that has been revealed in Scripture. And as we contemplate this God, the Creator uh, of all things, uh, and as redeemed people, the Redeemer who saved us, we contemplate and then turn to our responsibility as His redeemed people. And that is to joyfully uh, obey Him, uh, to fear the Lord and walk in His ways. This is what the Bible principally tells us. And as we uh, engage in Scripture from day to day and as we meditate upon the Word, we keep these, these two thoughts in our minds, that, that we're learning something about who God is, and we're also learning about what God requires of us. And so each time you read the Word, uh, ponder those two things and realize that uh, this is what the Scriptures, these are the things the Scriptures principally teach us. Well, I trust these times are a blessing for you. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave me a note. That information is there before you on the screen. And so until tomorrow, when we begin to look at question four, and we begin to see and answer the question of what is God, a very daunting task to try to explain, I trust the Lord will bless you today as you seek to serve Him. God bless.